In 1908, the first animated film was created. Since then, man has developed the art from traditional hand-drawn animation to computer animation. Here in Saskatchewan, talented creators work to produce a variety of productions, from animated stories to commercials and interactive media. Mr. Geets Romo, how would you define dig? Well, you know, man, like when you dig something. <laughs> well, yes, but... But dig, baby. It's like, you know, when you dig some chick or some cat. You know, or when you pick up on something, you dig it, you dig? In other words, the phrase, I dig, not only means I understand, but I am a special sort of person who understands in a very special way. Yeah, that is exactly what I said. I guess dig, uh, it's just about doing things that we dig. Bill Stamp, who is the uh, owner, uh, he uh, started actually uh, as a subsidiary of his other company, Cinepost Films. The branch uh, was basically developed to uh, do 3D animated commercials. Uh, Sastel, who was uh, doing a lot of commercials with Cinepost at the time, and um, they re requisitioned Bill to uh, learn how to do 3D animation because that's where they were deciding they wanted to go as far as their ad campaigns and here we are today seven eight years later and we've been producing ever since. Uh, the making of a commercial starts I guess with uh, the creative agencies uh, they come up with a script and present this to Sastel then once that's been approved it comes to us and what we usually do is have a, a group meeting with uh, with the agency and ourselves uh, we discuss the project what is needed what they're wanting to see and what we can bring to the table just being able to pull off something that the the viewer is going to really enjoy hopefully The thing I really wanted to do when I was at the university is, is move my practice into the gallery, which allows me more freedom than, well not freedom, but more options than the single channel video I normally work in. I've filmed for a while and, and worked with uh, actors and live, uh, more documentary and, and stuff like that. but. The thing I like about animation is that <laughs> it's a bit of an ego thing because uh, I can completely play God. It was 2009 and I was working on a corporate video, I think for a bank or something, and we needed a map. And I had only edited in Final Cut and Premiere at that point. And, uh, and we needed a map for it. And I'm like, well, what do I do for the map? And I don't know who said it, but it's like, well, go, go use the After Effects suite. When I realized After Effects had a camera in it, where you could manipulate depth of field, you could add lights to it, I, I, I'm like, oh, and I, I just, I, I learned keyframes in like, I don't know, 20 minutes, and then I animated the map, but then I'm like, whoa. And so then for Lugo, the first ever Lugo, I created a, a film about, it was my first time doing green screen and my first time really using After Effects. And it was a film about the, just, again, really loose narrative, wanting to experiment. Um, uh, Natasha Martina, who's a teacher in, uh, uh, drama. A mini version of herself kicks her in the face and then runs away and then she chases her into this cardboard world that then they go through and then she eventually catches it. So that's basically that film. I did a couple films with cardboard and then I started playing with different textures and I found paper textures were my favorite textures. I like damaged paper textures, crinkled, damaged, ripped, and so then I started playing with that and then after that I realized water damage was my favorite dam type of damage, mold and water damage, so I, I found I could, with that I could do that 
do that with watercolors, which I'd never played with before, so I started painting with watercolors and animating with that. I take, yeah, traditional or natural materials and convert them, whether it's through scanning or filming uh, or, um, well, I guess scanning or filming, <laughs> there's, there's not a third. I always feel there should be a third, um, scanning or filming, and then I bring them into After Effects and, yeah, basically uh, play God with them. With the video, I play with time remapping, and so I can, I can, you know, like with the ink, it can it can grow, but it can also disappear, you know. So by just reversing the time and just seeing how that simple process can, and and yeah, I like layering simple process on simple process to create complex process. I would like to. I mean, I would like to do like gallery art. I would like to show in galleries and hopefully have some of my pieces tour. Um, but I'm also not opposed to getting back into music videos and animation with the new things. I've planned that I'm gonna be here until I'm done my degree. And then after that, we'll see what happens. <laughs>
like uh, eight years uh, ago. We wanted to give more opportunities to, to our son, uh, Antonio. We will uh, uh, put a, a movie on the TV when, when he was uh, just a toddler and, and suddenly he will run away and he will go to his room, uh, grab some papers, grab some colors and start drawing. When I was small, I wanted to be an actor, director and a producer. Didn't even know what a producer did at the time. I learned most of my skills, honestly, from bonus features to Disney movies. What they explain is never technical. It's mostly conceptual description of how they made the film. That kind of helped in the development of the short and then the technical tutorials online on how to use the software. But really, really, this is how I do animation. I don't know if it's correct or not. None of my um, shorts up to that point had been fairy tales and I really wanted to try one because it's a big part of animation. So I thought, well, if I'm ever going to work in this industry, I might as well try it out now. Artistically, like visually, they are considerably harder to achieve. <laughs> but mostly the reason I wanted to make the Kingdom Blue was my parents don't necessarily like sappy fairy tales, so I, I needed to prove something. I guess the, ma the main reason or idea behind Kingdom Blue was trying to relate fairy tales into real life in some sort of way. Sometimes in fairy tales you have it narrated and someone's telling the story, but I thought someone is telling the story, but who is listening? Why are they telling the story? And for that, I, I, I chose to have it to be a coping mechanism for how the mother tries to ease her death into her daughter's mind through fairy tales. some uh, very, very nice uh, uh, films that he has uh, done, short films that he has done. The first one that was like kind of a professional level is um, about uh, two hummingbirds. And uh, that's when we thought it's like, wow, he's really, really good. That film was, I believe when he was 15 years old, but that was a very, very good movie for, for that age. My new film is called Magical Paintings. It's about a boy who feels alone. He's different. He doesn't have any friends except for his cat. Then this little girl moves into the house in front of his, and it's the first friend he ever has. I said, you have to go big or go home, so it's a musical, actually, with the original music by me. And I got a friend to do the voice for the girl, and then I am the voice of the boy. When you're here by my side, the magic was made for two. the characters talk. It makes the animation a little more realistic, but it gives me hand cramps from animating all that. So I mean, it's a commitment, but I think it's worth it. It's another aspect of animation that I wanted to explore, because a lot of animated movies are musicals, so might as well try it too.
if you're building something, you need to know what it's going to look like. So we know that the family's from Saskatchewan, so and they're at a football game, so we looked up Mosaic Stadium and use that as a rough kind of base to build off of. So this image, for example. So I'll go in there and I'll just start modeling uh, various pieces, be it bleachers, uh, you know, billboards, uh, jumbotrons and lights. And we get something a little bit more like this. It looks very bare if you were to just look at it. But when we actually see it from the camera, nice and full. So you don't want to waste time modeling a whole bunch of stuff like you know we're not going to model downtown Regina because we're in Regina you just want to model what you see. So I go there I start there and just start building layers upon layers of stuff uh, adding higher res detail to things so when we have benches they're not just flat and they catch nice highlights and shadows so we'll add little ridges and bolts and stuff like that. Uh, we UV map these things, which is, all of these are made up of small squares called polygons. For the polygon to get textured, you have to lay out UVs. And when you lay out UVs, you can now bring that into Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, so for the bench, let's say, I can make the green bench by creating this directly on top of that. And then, yeah, I guess from then on, you know, we start going into things like we add characters in. So we get proper placement of characters. Once again, we start just looking at composition, seeing where we need to fill gaps, and we start adding props. That's pretty much it. I package up all of those textures and ship them off to Ryan, because Ryan does the actual shading work, which makes my textures look like the real world counterparts. So I add the color to the speaker, but he makes the plastic look like plastic, is the best way to put it. Yeah, so I'm uh, Dwayne Melcher. I'm the president of Melcher Media. Uh, we're an interactive agency and um, we're here at our new office that we just moved in about a month ago. And one of the primary focuses that we do in our company is production um, on high-end interactive websites, um, e-learning solutions, games and apps. Rider Nation, Chiroy Simon here, and I'm feeling animated. So if a customer comes in and they're looking for a solution, an interactive solution, and it requires animation or 3D animation, we'll sit down with them and we'll scope out the project. We'll find out what their needs are, do a needs assessment essentially, and you know, figure out what they're really trying to accomplish at the end of the day. Hi, my name is Christine. And my name is Marty. We are your virtual guides. Uh, my name is Mike Borsa. I'm an art director here at Meltzer Media. And I love my job because every day it's uh, something different. There's always uh, new projects on the go and uh, you never know what you're going to be getting into with a project. These are the Millers. That's George, his wife Donna, and their kids. One of them is about to make a potentially deadly mistake. We do, you know, a little bit of everything, you know, but mainly website design and e-learning are, are two big ones right now here. Throughout the day, Jim is picking up and transferring germs. Yeah, so I actually went to school um, to take 3D animation and game design. It was kind of a passion of mine. I, I tried it out in high school. I was always into art and that side of things. So I knew I wanted to kind of go down that path. I uh, went to school for it, enjoyed it, loved it. Um, when I got out, um, one of the first uh, jobs that I took on was actually as a web developer that was able to do some animation and some 3D work. Yeah, I, I went to school here in Saskatchewan at uh, SIAST, new, com new Media Communications here at SIAST, and uh, it was a one-year course and uh, graduated, and uh, most of the guys I went to school with at the time uh, weren't finding jobs, so they kind of went off to Alberta and elsewhere to, to work, but I thought I'd kind of stick around here, and uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of work at the time, but uh, kind of slowly just picked up a little job here and there, and uh, built up the portfolio, and, uh, and then just kind of led to better things. Hi, I'm Sage. I'm 14, and I'm taking this course to get a job in a restaurant. About eight years ago, um, decided to go out on my own and start my own company, at which time, uh, as you can imagine, when you first start out, you're doing whatever you can, taking on any work related to the interactive industry, and, you know, kind of grown from, you know, myself, doing a little bit of everything up to about 11 of us now. Wish you could find ways to lower your energy bills? The Saskatchewan Inner Guide for Houses program can help. A lot of our uh, client bases come from referrals. 
uh, especially when it has to do with a lot of the 3D animation, um, game design, uh, interactive e-learning design that involves all these elements kind of combined together. Um, a lot of it comes from referrals as well as searches online for that specific type of market. It is kind of a niche market in what we do. Um, there's not a ton of competition, especially locally, that are doing the, the level of um, solutions that we are. A lot of other uh, friends of mine that have businesses, they kind of, every once in a while, they'll say, you know, we're kind of a little bit slow right now, you know, I'm not sure what's happening. Whereas in our business, it's really never been slow since the beginning. We're always so busy, so many things going on, and it, it never slows down. They come in every day, they do an awesome job, and they're, they're always trying to push the envelope. Um, you know, they have great ideas, they have great resources, and, and their ability to think out, outside the box is, is awesome because it really helps us to deliver for our clients and, and, and they love it. So I think we have a good, you know, um, in, in office culture as well. We, have, we do a lot of fun stuff. Um, we, we get together, we have, you know, staff engagements that I think everyone really, really enjoys. So that, it also makes good for a good atmosphere working around here. So which in turn helps grow the company because they're wanting to come into work because they like it and like some of the fun stuff we do as well as the projects and the satis satisfies customers that they see. So it, it's a win-win for everyone. I'm Ryan Hansford. I came from uh, Backwoods, Manitoba. Came here for 3D school and got a job at Dig Animation shortly after and I've been working here ever since. I do look development, lighting, and compositing and some texturing too. Well, look development or shading is making the materials look like they would in real life, so making glass look like glass. There's more to lighting than just time of day, like making a daytime outsider. It's kind of you use shadows and light to draw the viewer's eye to kind of show them where to look. This is what uh, the set looks like when I get it. So basically it's just kind of models with color on it right now. No shading or lighting. And then I can start putting in my lights. So these are some old lighting renders of kind of playing with different lights and playing with which direction the Shadows and the lights can be cast, so if I want to have her more backlit or more kind of the light beaming down on her face, kind of play around with that. So then like adding fur onto the bee, make them look fuzzy. And then we decided to go, instead of a more realistic bee, go kind of more cartoony and cute to kind of fit with the Red Riding Hood world. Kind of like adding grass. On my monitor here, you see these little, little strands right here. They don't really look like grass, but they're just, they look like squiggles right now. I have settings that I play with to determine how much gravity is on it, the direction I want it to be pointing, the thickness of it. These, these polygons here, that's one face, so I can tell it I want a hundred pieces of grass on each face. And right now there's well over a million polygons on this grass surface right now, so there's a hundred grass strands for each polygon, so that's how we populate the grass. So once I finish lighting it and I get it to a point where I like it, I take it into compositing package and I start building all the layers. Here's a different shot that I'm, I'll use an, ex an example. So it starts off, I render just the sky, sky plate by itself and then I'll add and start adding in all the props and elements, all the models that I've got and all the people from background and all the way to foreground. Start layering it all in. And then this is the final. You can add little effects and stuff like lens flares and particles and different color corrections. I think everybody gets pretty excited to finally see something that you've been spending, all you've been doing for the past two months working on, finally seeing it come together is pretty exciting, so. Don't hesitate. Save data and connect automatically in hundreds of locations with Sastel Select Wi-Fi. Only for Sastel Wireless customers. This is started by created in Maya. We get this kind of like low-res character that we want to do something with. 
I bring it into ZBrush, and ZBrush allows me to sculpt real time using a tablet all of the little details that we would love to see, like wrinkles and things like that. And then once again, with this kind of character, as I would take this model, UV it, texture all of the skin and all of the various pieces, and then hand it off to our lighter shader, and he makes it look pretty. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com. Max TV programming is now available on Max TV On The Go at maxTVOnTheGo.sastel.com. Thank <laughs> you.